Welcome back brothers to the shop. Before we get started today, I need to address the comments. Captain Hindsight likes to come in the comments and point out the obvious, and I don't know why. I think it's maybe to make himself look smart. It doesn't make you look smart. It just makes you look dumb, pointing out the obvious. Yes, okay, I understand, of all people, I understand that yes, I could do this on the Lucas Sawmill. I understand that because I have a Lucas Sawmill. It's not always about that. My granddad said there's more than one way to skin a cat, and because a man does something one way doesn't necessarily mean that that's the wrong way. What I think is not being understood is that this channel, I, I try hard to, to demonstrate how to do stuff multiple ways. I didn't use the Lucas Sawmill on this for a couple reasons. I don't want to, it's winterized, and I don't want to go out and work in the rain. Plus, I enjoy working with the primitive tools and showing guys how to do something with things they can actually acquire. Not everyone has a $15,000 Lucas mill, but they may want to work and do some big projects like that. Like today, for example, I will show you. And the other, another, another thing, well, you're only doing this and, and you're elitist because you, you have all this equipment, you can move this stuff around. I can do everything that I did yesterday with no equipment. With this PV and a floor jack, I can move this 1,500 pound log anywhere I want. And I'll show you right now. So. There's more than one way to do things. It doesn't mean you do, you're doing it wrong. It's just different. For example, today, we're not even going to be using the, the Alaskan chainsaw mill. We're going to be using the mini mill. This little tool right here, most guys could afford to buy this. Most guys have a chainsaw. If you have a chainsaw and a mini mill, you can cut lumber for your whole house. You can do it. Is it the most efficient? No, but at what, 100, 150 bucks? You can get to work. So that's what I'm trying to share is multiple ways of doing things. Perfect example. I need to start, if I need to flip this log and I don't have an excavator, I don't have heavy equipment, one man can simply do this. Brothers, we have the benefit. We're resting on the shoulders of giants. The men that went before us, that had to do these things before mechanization, before hydraulics, they figured out a way to do it. That's why we look at the past. We look at the past, how they do, did it, and we do the same. You don't have to be super bright. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just have to look and see how they did it in the past. PV and a floor jack. Put your four by fours down so you, you can get underneath of it with your jack. Okay, now we want to put that on, back on the casters. If your jack's too high because you didn't use six by sixes, use a lever, man. Get everything ready. Anyway, you get the idea. You see the problem, the problem I see, here I go, an old boomer ranting about the younger generation, but it's true. The problem with a lot of the younger guys is they've never been taught how to work. They don't know how to work. They're what I call single faceted, not multifaceted. That may have been fine back in your parents' generation where you get a job and the corporation took care of you. Those days are gone. In the future, the men that are going to survive and thrive are the ones that are multifaceted. It's what I call, meaning that you can do anything, that you can solve any problem, that no matter what, you'd never make an excuse. Oh, we need to do concrete? We don't have a pump truck? How many guys will sit around and wait? Oh, we can't do concrete without a pump truck. We didn't have a pump truck in my day. My dad didn't have one in his day. My granddad didn't have one in his day. I'll tell you a story. My granddad was so poor after the war 
that they were on, they lived out in the place that was a, was the country, and then as the city started growing, a suburb of Portland, they brought the sewer lines in. Now, when they bring the sewer lines in, you are mandated to hook up to it. They'll give you a year or what have you. He didn't have the money to do it. He didn't have the money to hire some guy with a specialty piece of a equipment, which was probably a steam shovel back in the day, to dig 14 feet down in the ground in the middle of the street and connect to the sewer line. Do you know what he did? He started digging. Him and his brother dug by hand. And when they hit boulders, they didn't go rent a chipping gun. They didn't have some expert come out to do it. They beat on it with sledgehammers until it was small enough gravel that they could haul it out of that 14 foot hole with five gallon buckets. And they did that. That's, they figured out a way. They did what they had to do. Funny story, when my granddad got out of the war in 1945, him and his brother took their, the money that they got from the GI loan, I believe. His brother was also a veteran. And they went to a government auction that was selling old barracks buildings. They bought a huge barracks building that was big enough, bigger than two houses. And my, my granddad and his brother disassembled that whole thing. They saved every nut, they saved every screw, they saved every pane of glass, the roofing, everything, the cabinets, and they built both of their houses, which they lived in until, well, until they died. You know, that's the type of thing that they were willing to do. Would they live through the depression? They understood that you either had to buck up, you had to figure out a way, you had to figure out a way to, to make it happen, or you would go hungry. We've got a toad in the shop. So that's gonna be the new future. If you're sitting around waking, waiting for a job, if you're sitting around, if you're just throwing applications out in the mail and not doing anything and just waiting for that one thing that someone to come and save you, it ain't gonna happen. Those days are gone and the future is gonna to belong to guys that are resourceful and willing to do and can do anything. So you gotta stop that mindset that someone else is gonna provide for you. These companies, these corporations, these jobs that you have, if they're from big companies, they don't care about you. There's no loyalty. And so I say you should have no loyalty to them. Start figuring out a way that you can make money. Buy a dump trailer, go out and hit, hit the street, start knocking on doors. Hey, do you need trash hauled away? It's a great deal. You can make enough money to buy a dump trailer or use your pickup until you can get one in just a few months. What I found from that is if you go do that, you're gonna have all sorts of valuables that you can make some extra money on by selling on eBay. One man's garbage is another man's treasure. There is so much demand right now for just a handyman. This generation and young families and couples, guys don't know how to do anything. They can't fix a leaky window. They can't fix anything. They can't fix uh, a running toilet. If you just put together a basic set of tools and had a basic understanding, just general handyman, and you put yourself out there and you kept yourself clean and make yourself presentable and a professional look, you could do six figures. Don't look for someone to save you in the future. The future is for the men that are going to pull themselves uh, up out of their situation and make things happen regardless of who tells you what. Don't listen to them. Don't give your loyalty to any companies. Do your own thing. Get multiple grinds going. Do what you have to do uh, to get ahead. It's going to be tough. Um, the nice thing about single men, if you find yourself single, you have so many options. You have, you can Guys are simple. Guys can live in their car for a month, two months, six months if they have to and just stack up cash. You don't have the, the hindrance of a family. You don't have the hindrance of children. You don't have the expense of, and the obligation that comes with all of that. Oh, Randy. Thanks for watching. This turned into its own video. We'll be back to the sawmilling on the next one. Thanks for watching. Keep us in your prayers. May God bless you and your families. We'll see you all on the next video.